All right, getting ready for an acrylic painting class. They should be arriving soon. I always get so excited when I have a class. So let me show you what we're gonna be doing today. So I make these little booklets, I make them, um, for each student. And what we're gonna be doing is that each class, we do first a little, we swatch out the paints, we do a thumbnail of, of the colors that we want to use, and then on the next page, we do a revised version of what we're painting and how we want to paint it, and we really map it out. And that way they have a guide, and then they can paint on, on the canvas. So I make these little books. This is with um, Canson mixed media paper. Hold on, let me see what paper that is. So it is the Canson, and it's in a block. I buy this huge block of paper, 35 pages of 300 gram paper. I got really thick paper. So the booklets might look thick, but they only have like 14 pages and they're a bit bigger than A5. This is my Royal Talons A5 sketchbook. And this is the sketchbook that I make. Let me show you. It's a bit wider, as you can see. I just, yeah, I really like the thick paper because you can do anything on them. I mean, with this paper right here, anything. You could throw gouache, Acrylics, watercolors, inks, mark wall markers. I mean, you can use them and they'll just spread more. Graphite. So. And then I made the cover. It has fluorescent pink and red. I think it's gouache? No. Is it gouache? Don't remember. But I sewed them. And so they lay flat. And I, I make these for myself as well, and they're really dandy. And so this way you can keep track of all the lessons that they've had with me. And so in this class, we're going to be doing creatures, like, like this here, um, only different. <laughs> in, the, in the previous class, we wrote down a whole bunch of ideas. Let me see if I find the ideas. We wrote down a whole bunch of ideas of like things for the head, things for the body, locations, extra details. And then from that, we would create our little creatures. And then in this class, we will be using our little sketchbooks, swatching out paint that I said in the beginning, looking at different colors, choosing our palette, and then creating a more in-depth sketch with colors, and then going to the canvas. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Welcome to voiceover, Christine. So the class that I was just talking about went really well. We worked in their sketchbook and we chose one of the characters that we had created in the previous class. We had created six different characters in six different settings. It was an amazing fantasy imagination character building exercise. And then in, once we were in the studio, we sat down and we picked our favorite one and we really planned out in detail how we wanted to paint it because we wanted to finally paint it on a canvas. But before doing it on a canvas, we sketched out different thumbnails, ideas, and looked at different palettes, tried out different paints because I have different types of acrylic paints from different brands and different grades. And so we really decided which paints we wanted and that was the whole class but I don't like to film all of my private art lessons. Um, I like to keep them private, especially if the student doesn't want me to film, and so I didn't film any of it. But here you're seeing me um, gather all of my inks because I am about to sit down 
and paint in the early morning. My favorite time to paint is when everyone in the house is still sleeping. I have my nice warm cup of coffee with me and this was during um, a monthly challenge on Twitter where you would paint bugs. The challenge was called Summer Buggin'. I didn't know it existed. I had just started and I'm kind of new to Twitter even though I've had accounts on there before but I'm I'm finally partaking in the Twitterverse. It's, it's fun and when I saw an artist sketch something about Summer Buggin', I'm like, yes please. So of course I had to paint bugs. I mean, I love bugs, especially beetles. On the previous page you saw that I had painted a fly. Um, I'll post a little picture here of the fly. And uh, yeah, I decided then the next one was going to be beetles. I had painted several of them. Um, I'll create a, an, a whole video of like a flip through of all the bugs that I painted. I wasn't able to do the whole month challenge because I heard about it like, I don't know, like maybe two weeks had until mid July. I heard of it and that's when I started to post bugs that I had already painted throughout the years. And, um, and then I created some more because I had to, I couldn't just only post old bugs. I had to post new bugs. So these were my favorite. I absolutely love these. And here what I was doing, so I, ha I was looking at the reference picture on my tablet, which you, it's out of frame, you can't see it. And um, I decided to not outline. I don't always like to outline things, especially if I'm using very translucent mediums like watercolors or inks. I prefer to just plop down the color, the basic shapes, and create layers. And so with the beetle, this one was more of like a a warm brown color. And so I decided to first start with the Senegal yellow and I'm using here right now, I'm using the um, Sennelier shellac inks. I love these. They're nice and syrupy and creamy and they, they create this goopy, <laughs> I love the words I use, goopy texture and feel and it just looks like amber, you could say, like that type of a type of look. And I was just going to layer the colors um, one by one and I love doing that. I absolutely love how inks look when you layer colors on top of them to create a certain color. Not just mix them beforehand, I enjoy that too, but I love to layer colors. So first light and then a bit darker until all the way the darkest color. I love that. So yeah. So I filmed this whole process. Um, I don't, I mean, I was, con I was considering doing like a sit with me, relaxing, full process video. I don't know how popular that would be. If it's something that you're interested in, comment down below and, and I can post it. I, I sometimes really enjoy those videos if I just want something in the background either to fall asleep to or to paint, I'll just have that in the background and I really enjoy, it feels like there's someone in the room with you while you're painting, keeping you company. Because that's the thing with um, being an illustrator and an artist, it's a very solitary job. You are by yourself and I personally need the solitude to be able to focus and feel free creatively. If I have someone in the room with me, it's very hard to focus and it's very hard to like, free myself. I know that sounds really cliche, but I really have a problem with that. So having a video on of just someone painting when I'm painting, it can feel nice because I know there's no pressure and know that's not like they're checking up on me, even though I know that whomever would be in a room with me would not be checking up on me. But just that I have that sense in like the back of my head. So if you're interested, leave a comment down below and I will gladly post the full length video of me, maybe with just ambient sound, I don't know, um, of painting these beetles. But for now, I'm going to speed this up so you can get that nice time lapse goodness and see how I paint this beetle.
So today is Monday, August 2nd, and I'm down here in the studio. I have been for a couple of hours. It's quite warm today. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys what I'm working on. So the first thing that I'm working on is a new workshop that I'm going to be doing here in person of ink dragons. And I thought that would be a really cool thing to do in the fall, you know, to teach kids about inks so they can participate in Inktober. And so yeah, so I was creating the flyer for that. And then I was also creating a flyer for my pet portraits. First, it's just a... I just created like a quick little sketch here in my plain white paper of different pets and now I'm going to do this in Procreate because I just for flyers I tend to do it digitally versus traditional however for the um, ink dragon workshop I am going to be using inks because I obviously want it to look like an ink um, painting and I really like that texture. So what I decided to do for that one is to create a like old newspaper type of um, design for the flyer. And then I was also thinking that I can make one flyer with all the different activities that I am offering here in my studio, which is the pet portraits, the ink um, workshop, I'm doing a zine workshop. I also have painting parties for birthdays that I offer, and then weekly classes when the school year starts in different languages. Um, so that's what I've been working on, and so now I'm going to sit down, since I did the sketch, and I'm going to be doing my Inky Dragon, because I think this Inktober, spoiler, I'm going to be doing dragons, so I'm kind of excited. So let me uh, switch the angle, and I'll show you guys how I'm doing the dragon. Okay, so I need to look for my reference picture. Here's a dragon boat. I did a France with a little rhino beetle. I think that's so cute. I really want to paint that, and I might probably do that for Inktober because I really like that sketch. But first, let me look for a good reference. I really enjoy looking at the medieval old dragon illustrations as inspiration. But it always takes me a while to find a good reference because I'm looking for inspiration. See, I love, I love these, these. This one right here. Oh, I think that's so cool. I think I like this one. Oh, these are so cool. And apparently, the ones that I like, I've already looked at. <laughs> oh, that one's so neat. But I like friendly dragons. I don't like the scary ones. So I wanted, let me do the sketch again. Let me go back to the page that I like this. Okay. So I wanted um, one in like a little, like a little Victorian uh, frame, you can say. And then I wanted two on the sides. And then I wanted an open space. I love using this cheap white paper. Nothing special about it. Like, nothing. I get this at Kafu. It's just regular white paper. Alright, so I wanted to do the, the oval here with the dragon. Here's the dragon face, it's a bit wider. And then it comes down like this. 
And I wanted flames around it. Probably not like that, probably more like this. We'll have to see. Um, yeah. And then I'll have wings coming out like this. And then I had flame type figures coming out here at the bottom. Some here at the top as well. Yeah. And then I wanted, and I don't know what to put here. So it's the evening here again lately. I've been doing a lot of evening sessions in the studio. And tomorrow I have an art class, uh, an acrylic art class for younger girls, um, age eight to 10. And we will be painting, let me show you the reference picture. This is what we will be painting. They requested a giraffe with birds. And I think it's a good example, motive to paint for that age group. Of course, I will be simplifying the shapes so that it, easy, it is easy for them to paint it. And right now I have my palette here and my brushes here and the acrylics. And I'm going to be painting in my Royal Talon sketchbook this so they can see what it looks like. Kids had a lot of fun. This is one that they created. I think it came out really well. It did an amazing job. They followed the steps. They did everything on their own. It was really great. Um, but I'm going to end the vlog now. And here's a little preview for next week. <laughs>